suddenly appear every time you are near just like me they long to be close to you why do stars fall down from the sky every time you walk by just like me they long to be close to you on the day that you were born the angels got together and decided to create a dream come true so they sprinkle stardust in your hair of golden starlight in your eyes of blue da -da -da. Da -da -da. that is why all the girls in town follow you all around what you went way past yeah i don't even know if they were the they right might words. not have even been the right way probably <laughs> i was an old old fan of karen carpenter one of my favorites uh, we've only just begun yeah that's the one you really wanted to, to say today. that that is my favorite yes. you picked this we went with it really really great singer yes note to self carpenter songs should not be sung by men that did not go out well <laughs> on my part. So keep the Justin, Carpenter can you songs kick this away. out? <laughs> now, our original song today was Heart of Glass by Blondie. So if you think we that struggled was high. If you think we struggled with that one, Heart of Glass by Blondie would have been even tougher. Kick out that first line. <laughs> <laughs> Once I had a love and it was a gas. What's Turned out, out I had a heart of glass. <laughs> All right. Maybe so, another day. Yeah, we'll do Blondie another time. Okay, moving right along in our happy hour here. Wendy, we have um, a very interesting Bloody Mary today. And I'm looking at this and I'm seeing a piece of art. What do we have? A potato skin Bloody mm. Mary. Mm. And of course we have the bacon wow. and the pepper, colorful peppers, the little peppers, and olives. Delicious, and that's cheddar cheese. These potato skins were cut. Cheddar cheese and bacon sprinkled on top. They look yummy. Delicious. What an interesting Bloody Mary we have today. And again, um, we like to always thank when our guests uh, send us videos or pictures. And we actually have two pictures we want to show you right now of some amazing Bloody Marys that uh, friends of ours and friends of the show, uh, Jeff and Kathy Kirk. From Lancaster, from PA. Lancaster, PA. We have fans all over the world. And even as far as Lancaster, what, what, what country is Lancaster in? <laughs> but fans um, all over the world, all eight of you are scattered about everywhere. Yes, they're big fans yes. and they're big Bloody Marys. I think they drink Bloody Marys all over the country. Their pictures are insane. Yes. And I think Pittsburgh was Kathy. I think Kathy really is the major Bloody Mary drinker. Shout out to Kathy Kirk. Yes, and, shout out um, to both of you. Yep, and she has a beautiful one from Pittsburgh that's so creative, and they look so good. Delicious. They look like a soft crab. Yeah. And then um, they use the uh, olives for the eye. They actually made a decorative uh, the, the restaurant. We'll have to go there sometime. Yes, for sure. And, and Jeff and Kathy, when we come there, we would like to treat you to a Bloody Mary when yes. we come up and visit. So please hold us to that. All right. Um, we have uh, a movie today, Wendy, which has kind of been the theme. We've kind of been going with like a comedy this week and kind of that, that college humor. What is today's uh, movie uh, of the day? Fast Times at Ridgemount High. Great, great movie. Sean Penn, Jennifer Jason Lee, and Judd Reinhold and Phoebe Cates uh, follows a group of high school students growing up in Southern California. Uh, this movie, when this movie came out, it, it didn't have big expectations, and it turned out to just be a huge, huge. movie. Huge. Remember, it took place at the mall. Yeah. And, and that's when malls were just really starting to take off then. Yeah. And that's where the kids hung, right? Where'd you hang? Did the you mall. go to the mall? The yeah. Mall. And they had the video arcade yes. at the malls. It was like just. It was it, all about the mall. For us kids growing up in the, the 70s mall and the sandwash. Seventies and eighties, they were the place to go. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there was a scene mm -hmm. in that movie. Phoebe Cates was initially reluctant to carry out her character's poolside topless scene at the house in West Hills, California, because she thought the neighbors might be spying on the set from the surrounding rooftops. 
Now that scene where she's on the diving board and she takes off her bathing suit top, did you know that is one of the most paused movie scenes in history? I can imagine. That, that was scene, quite a scene. Everyone paused and Phoebe yeah. at that time, very pretty girl, and she Beautiful. actually, that was one of the most paused scenes in all of movie history. But there's another scene, Wendy, that matches that scene. Do you remember the movie Fatal Attraction? Yes. And do you remember the scene where Sharon Stone is sitting there getting... <laughs> Um, she's sitting there in the police and she's getting interrogated and she uncrosses her legs yes. and she's not wearing any underwear. Yes. <laughs> that is another scene that was paused numerous times. Two great times. scenes. So those are two scenes that were paused. But now, Wendy, I, this is, I'm really uh, pumped about this because we have found the original Jeff Spicoli, who they, they modeled that movie after. And we were able to get him for the set. That's show. amazing. And um, here we have it as our special guest, Jeff Spicoli, uh, from the original Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> You're welcome. I've put on a few pounds, you know, but otherwise I'm the same dude. Uh, this is the first guest appearance I've had since the movie. So, do you have any questions you want to ask Jeff, Wendy, at this time? I do. What are you doing with yourself now, Jeff? I have a vape shop in Malibu, and dude, it's, you know, I surf and I listen to Mick Jagger tunes. I was a roadie for Jagger for a few years after the movie. You know, Jeff, I, I thought it would be fun if we reenacted a scene from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome! So what we're going to do is, I'm, I'm glad you want to do it, we're going to do that scene where you first arrive to Mr. Hand's class and you rip up the schedule, okay? And you say, Hey bud, what's your problem? And then Mr. Hand says, No problem at all. I think you know where the front office is. You beep! And that's it. You hit it again, Jeff. Thank you so he much it. for being on the show. Uh, I miss the little white stuff on his nose, doesn't he? Usually yeah, because he's a surfer and, you know, right. he has he the always had the white yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and in quarantine, that white stuff might be hard to find. Yeah, <laughs> they're all out. But good luck with the vape, the vape shop, Jeff Spicoli. Yes. And thanks again. He did put on a little weight there. He did. But, you know, time, he's probably, you know, yeah, time. That's what happens. Up. I mean, he's no youngster. He's probably in his 50s right yeah, now. Yeah, he looked great. He did. He looked very good. All right, Wendy, do we have a positive thought for today? Yes, this is actually a story that will go into the positive thought. Um, and it is a story that we personally had years ago. Our daughter, Tess, um, had a tennis coach that came to our house. She was probably 10. 10. Yeah, Gary's going to share the story with nine me. Nine or 10, yeah. Very quiet, shy um, girl, Tess was. She didn't speak a lot of times. She took everything in, but very, very painfully shy. And um, this guy was tough. He was pretty brutal. And um, Gary and Tess found him and thought, you know, this guy's going to be great. And I thought he was a bit much, overly tough. And I kept saying, Tess, I think he's too much, a little bit too, you know, mentally, you know, I'm just thinking too much. It's fine to be tough, but I think you need to be positive too. That's just my opinion. He wasn't very positive. Wasn't positive. And um, I kept saying, you know, and she's like, no, 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 I, I want to do it. He's going to make me better. He's going to make me better. And I cringed every time he came. And our younger daughter really cringed when he came. Why was that, Gary? Yeah, well, well, you know what? Of course, he came a distance to coach Tess. And then um, before he'd leave, he'd always have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And for whatever reason, he really had trouble uh, when he went to the bathroom, not getting it in the toilet. Yes. There was and Lily would issue. cringe. He's coming again. So oh. we would always have to clean up after he left. Yeah. So anywhere he sat in the in mm -hmm. our house, Lily would not sit in that spot after. For like weeks. Yeah. So, so that was a struggle in itself. She would say, Mom, did you, would you clean that off? Right? Yeah. Again. No and idea again. why. You know, but that was just it. It was just one of those weird situations. Yeah. But anyway, after finally it was enough and he left. But I have to tell you what she gained from that. However long we had him, six weeks, eight weeks, um, he made her really mentally tough. And she said later, if I didn't have him as a coach, I wouldn't have the mental tough, toughness that I have today. So I do believe without, again, abusive and, you know, mentally abusive, just that toughness, it helped her in the end. And she said that. So whether you have a kid academically, a tough teacher, um, a tough coach, a tough um, boss, as long as they're not really, really overdoing it, like mentally abusive, 
I think, again, you grow from that, you get stronger, and um, it can help if you have younger children. It can help them in different ways. Yeah, I think it's important with mental toughness, not just with athletes, but in any profession. It yeah. really helps to have that mental toughness because you're going to have a lot of ups and downs. You're going to have a lot of people coming at you. Yeah. And you just have to be able to handle that if you want to succeed. And you use it later in life. So if, you, if your kids get it later in life, they're just going to know how to deal. Yep. I always revert back to people like Roger Federer or Michael Jordan. All the greatest athletes are extremely mentally tough. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Most athletes, this has always been my theory, most athletes, when you get to a certain pro level, they all have the same physical attributes. It's what's up here yeah. that, that separates the best from the rest. And that's the toughest part for a lot of people. Yeah. So that was a, a great uh, positive thought, Wendy, and, and a nice little uh, talk about mental toughness. Yeah. So good job there. Um, we will end today's show. I, I have uh, a little quote that I would like to leave us with. Blowing out someone else's candle doesn't make yours shine any brighter. That's a great quote. Yes, it is. Thank you. And uh, we'll, on that note, we are going to take off and uh, enjoy our happy hour. And we would like you to enjoy yours as well. Uh, stay safe, everyone. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.